like it or not. Thank you, I love you, but I'm gonna preach the gospel whether you like it or not. to God, the people still went back to their iniquity, 
back to their idols and they still did not have a true relationship with God and so it was prophesied many times in the Old Testament that God was gonna come and teach his own people and so the Bible says that Jesus existed before the beginning of the world and the Bible says the world was made through him everything visible and invisible the Bible says later on that this Jesus who existed before the beginning of the world he came into the world in form of a human being and when Jesus Christ came into the world the Bible says he went to the cross of Calvary and at the cross of Calvary Jesus Christ paid a high price there just for you and I so that by the grace and the mercy of God we will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven now somebody is asking the question why is it that Jesus didn't just stay in heaven and save us why did he have to come in human form to die for us because God is the master planner he chooses the method he wants to adopt because we are humans and so for someone to pay the price for us the person has has to go through what we've gone through and pass the test and Jesus Christ the Bible says God became man God became a human and came on earth how is that difficult to God a lot of people wonder like how can God become a man how is that impossible but when I read the Bible I see the Bible says all things are possible with God Luke 18 verse 27 if all things are possible with God then God can become a man and come on earth right the Bible says the Holy Spirit became a dove and came on Jesus. If the Holy Spirit can turn into a dove, what can, what can stop the Holy Spirit from becoming a man? And so it, it's, it's easy to understand that. But I just want to let you know that God had to become a man to come on earth. He went through the same thing that we are going through. He went through tests, temptations, persecutions. But Jesus Christ never submitted to it. Jesus Christ, he was perfect and holy. He walked on this earth for, for 33 years. Jesus lived the life of 33 years that a normal human being cannot live for 33 seconds. He lived a perfect life upon the face of this earth. He never saw a lady and said, wow, Jesus Christ walked on earth perfect, holy, without blemish. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, this is the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. John the Baptist could recognize who Jesus was. This is the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. If you've read the Old Testament, you will know that they've used the lamb and the blood of the lamb many times as a symbolism to cover their houses. In the times of Egypt, when the, the children of Israel were held captive, were, were held captive in, in Egypt, for more than 400 years the Bible says that there was a time the spirit of death was coming upon Pharaoh and his people to kill all the firstborn because of Pharaoh's disobedience God gave an instruction that they should kill lambs and put the, the blood of the lamb on their doorposts and those who put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts the spirit of death will pass over the spirit of death will not enter their houses. That was simply a symbolism of what was to come. That was simply a symbolism of Jesus who is the lamb and his blood that was supposed to cover us because we are the houses of God. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when the Bible says you are the God's temple, it means God lives in you. God bless you, sir. Have a beautiful day, sir. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are God's temple. And so, it's a symbolism. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. It's a symbolism of what happened in the Old Testament. And it's happening today. You see, until now, God has been trying to speak to Ohio. Until now, God has been trying to speak to New York, California, America. But since you are not listening, God has to allow storms to wake you up and, 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 and America is not the same anymore it's not the same anymore and it's getting worse worse and worse 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 and worse and, and so Trump is the only hope for America and after that the peace system will come on this 
world. And after the beast system comes on this world, if you were not ready, you are finished. Well, I'm just telling you right now, he's gonna be president. God showed us already. You are in the past, we are in the future. But after Trump comes, God will have mercy on America for eight more years. And after eight more years, the beast system will come over. America that you see today, you will not recognize it in the future. Because we have refused to turn to God. But God says he's going to have mercy one more time upon this nation. But how, how will you not turn to God when you see clearly that the Bible is getting fulfilled right before your eyes? right before your eyes that is why we're preaching this gospel of salvation my friend so that by the grace and the mercy of god you will be saved and have eternal life when you read the bible you will see clearly when you read the bible you see clearly that there are many things many prophecies that has come to fulfillment thousands of prophecies have come to fulfillment and a lot of them are still getting fulfilled the bible is real it's not a comic book it is real and so my friend Jesus Christ sent us here today to proclaim this good news we're not here to proclaim bad news bad news there's a lot of bad news going around more than 200 people died because of this uh, hurricane that came around it swept across Florida swept across Alabama swept across Georgia swept across North Carolina and other ones are about to hit the U.S. again. Why does God allow these things? God does not purposely do that. No. But God can allow something to come into a nation because, because of the field that we are doing. But if we do not understand God's voice, because God can speak through circumstances. And if circumstances like this is, is entering the United States of America, it means that God is trying to tell us something. It means that we need to get right with God. And after all, we are living in the last days, we are living in the end times, where there is so much deception as to who is the way, where is the way, what is the way, who is the truth. But you see, the truth remains the truth. Jesus Christ said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No matter how much or how many times we try to modify, to modify the Bible, modify things. The truth remains the truth. There's even another Bible called the Queen James Bible. The LGBT Bible. There's nothing like that. What, what is real, the devil always tried to copy it. What is real, the devil always tried to make a photocopy. But the original remains the original. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ if you check very well, check the prophecies of the Bible, you will see that many things from generation to generation that is happening today and that has happened has been prophesied in the Bible long ago. Even what's happening between Iran and Israel and other nations, it's been prophesied in the Bible. The Bible says when you see the destruction of Jerusalem, you know that the desolation is near. And a lot of people say, when is, when is, when is it going to get better? It's not gonna get better worse is coming according to the Bible you see the Bible also prophesied about the river Euphrates the Euphrates River that dried up two years ago how many of you know that river check it out right now on YouTube it's dried up guess what it's written it's written in the Bible it was prophesied thousands of years ago that that river was gonna dry up someday and that when it dries up, some dark angels gonna come out of there and they will cause chaos in the world. I'm telling you right now, it's only the Bible that prophesied all those things accurately. But you see, I'm simply telling you some of the prophecies that have been fulfilled and that are still being fulfilled in our world today to tell you that Jesus is true and to tell you that the word of God is true. And so today is the day of salvation. If you hear the word, the voice of God, do not harden your heart, but turn to Christ today for the salvation of your soul. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. 
who says this eternal life you can receive it if you surrender your life to Christ if you truly turn from your evil one and say God I'm sorry God I surrender and, and, and you mean it with all your heart the Bible says God will have mercy on you this is why we come out here preaching the gospel of salvation because the Bible says the end is near Jesus is coming back soon a lot of people prepare for work but they don't prepare for heaven they prepare for school, they don't prepare for heaven. They prepare for many things, but they don't prepare for heaven. But heaven is the goal, because after all, this life here is short. It's just like a flower. The Bible says life is like a vapor, and life is like a flower. The wind passes over it, strong wind passes over it, and the flower is taken away. And so this is what we're talking about. So think about your eternity I'm not saying you can't go to work go to the park or do whatever you want to do go to the restaurant do it but the Bible says whatever you do do it for the glory of God so let me ask you now is your life giving glory to God every day the things you do with your breath this oxygen is it giving glory to God but this is what we're talking about the gospel of salvation today is a day of salvation Call upon the name of Jesus today for the salvation of your soul and you shall be saved. For God so loved the world, for God so loved the United States of America, for God so loved Ohio that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him would not perish but have eternal life for their soul. Jesus Christ, He came into this world as a Lamb, a holy Lamb without sin without blemish because he created this world the bible says in colossians 1 verse 16 that all things visible and invisible was made by jesus christ jesus created everything you see and everything you don't see jesus christ the bible says the world was made through him even though the world was made through him he came into the world but the world could not recognize him the world could not recognize him. That's why Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Some say you are the prophet. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Isaiah. But a fisherman, someone who never went to school, he spoke by the Spirit of God. So just because you go to your university and you come out there and say, God does not exist, does not mean you are right. Because a fisherman in the Bible is the one who said, Jesus, you are the son of God. Then Jesus said, my father in heaven has revealed this to you. Not, not human beings, but my father in heaven. All other ones missed it, but that guy got it. So anyone who wants to come to Christ must be able to humble themselves like a child and say, God, help me. And Jesus Christ will be able to help you. The Bible says clearly, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The more you sin, the more you are harming yourself. The more you live in your disobedience, your disalignment and your sin, you are harming yourself, you are harming your soul. The Bible says sin leads to death. But Christ, Yeshua, it leads to life. The name Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshua. It means to save. It means to rescue. It means to deliver. And Christ came into this world thousand years ago to deliver us from our sin to rescue us from our sin but just like 911 that's how you gotta call on Jesus the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3 it says clearly call upon the name of the Lord and he will show you great and mighty things which you do not know you think you know everything you don't no you don't just like they tell you, oh, oh, there's no firmament over there. The, the, the earth is the earth is round. There's no firmament over there. And you believe it. But the Bible says there's a firmament over there. There's a there's a doom there. There's an invisible glass doom over there. Nobody can pierce it. But but the world is full of deception. How will you know the truth when you are far from God? How will you know the truth when you don't want to come close to God to know more about him and his kingdom? When I've already taught you. There are many prophecies in the Bible that have been fulfilled, that are still getting fulfilled right now, right before your eyes. When will you wake up to know that the Bible is true? When will you wake up to know that Jesus is true? 
that only Jesus takes to heaven, not Mohammed, not Buddha, not Mary, not some idol, not some celebrity, but Jesus Christ alone. The world is entering into a different realm right now. We are living in the last days, we are living in, a, in the last hours, we are living in the end time, but so many people are caught up in deception, so many people are still caught up in, in evil, so many people are still caught up. But the Bible says it will be like in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, Noah was building the ark. God told him to tell people to enter the ark. But a lot of people were mocking at Noah saying, you've been building the ark for a hundred years. Noah built the ark for a hundred years before the flood came. Just like today we are preaching the gospel, people say, you guys have been talking about Jesus coming back for 2,000 years now. Uh-oh, he's about to come back. I'm telling you right now, look at the events happening in the world. But have you prepared yourself? The Bible says it's because of the mercies of God that we are not consumed. You think you are not consumed because you are strong, but it's because of God's mercy. But God is giving you time, but you have to realize that we are the ones getting older. Yesterday you were 12 years old. How old are you now? You think you're going to be like this forever? No. Life is short on this side. But there is an eternal life. There is an eternity that's waiting for us on the other side. If only you come to Christ, you'll receive that eternal life today. I'm not telling you come to our church. That's not what I'm, I'm not preaching a church here. I'm preaching Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the master of the church. I'm not calling you to a denomination here. I'm calling you to heaven, to Jesus. Because when I'm preaching, a lot of people are fond of asking me, what church are you from? I won't tell you because I'm here to preach Jesus. I'm not here to preach a church. But I'm here to, to just tell you that there's no other salvation but in Jesus Christ. And today, if only you will humble yourself and say, God, help me, God will help you. If only you humble yourself and say, God, I surrender, God will hear your cry. Invest and do a lot of plans. But at the end of the day, the Bible says, Naked I came into the world, naked will I go back. Always remember, you came to this world naked, without a car, without a degree. You came to this world naked and you're going to go back the same. The only thing you will carry out of this world with you, that will last forever, is your relationship with God. That's why I want to ask you again. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with God? If you die now, where will you go? Don't just think about other people being shot dead every day. Other people dying of sickness every day. Other people tornado, hurricanes taking their houses every day. You may be the next tomorrow. What if it was you? What if you were to die the next minute? Where would you go when you die? Where would you spend eternity? Jesus said, come, into, come unto me. I am the spring of living water. If you drink of me, you will never thirst again. Jesus said, come unto me. I am the bread of life. If you eat of me, you will never be hungry. Be hungry. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Do you want the bread of life? Eat of Jesus. That is why Jesus Christ came into this world, my friend. He came into this world to save us from our sin, to deliver us from the bondage of hell. Jesus Christ. That same Jesus Christ that was crucified on the cross. On that cross, He offered you and I forgiveness. On that cross, He offered you and I mercy. If you've been listening to my preaching from the beginning, I've not been preaching condemnation and I've not been condemning anybody. I've just been telling us we have sinned against God and we need a Savior and that Savior is Christ. Because today a lot of people don't know the difference between conviction and condemnation. Condemnation means there's no more way out for you. 
Conviction means there's a way out for you. And so today is the day of salvation, my friend. If you hear this gospel of salvation, run to Christ. Run to Jesus. Because today may be your last day to hear about Jesus. Today may be your last day to hear the gospel. Make no mistake about it. People die every single day. I've worked as a nurse in Maryland. I know what it means to see people die every day. Some people don't see it. So they think life is just, oh, every day you are just alive. No, people die every day. You may be the next person. You never know. You never know. That is why we're preaching this gospel of salvation, my friends. So that by the grace and the mercy of God, you can be saved and have eternal life. Jesus Christ is calling you today. As you open up your heart to Christ, as you, op as you open up your heart to God, God will hear your cry. If you truly turn to God, God will hear your cry. And God will have mercy on you. The Bible says clearly, Jesus Christ truly demonstrated true love on that cross. God is love. And the Bible says anyone who does not love does not know God. The reason why you see there's so much hatred and fake love on earth is because we don't know God. Because the Bible says clearly God is love and anyone who does not love does not know God. So if you want to check someone who knows God, check their love. And so you, the reason you see hatred in the world, that's why even people pass here, they, they say F you while I'm preaching the gospel, they're insulting. Because there's no love in their heart and there's no God in their heart. But I want to tell you clearly, my friend, that if you come to Jesus Christ, you will experience true love. Jesus loves you to die for you. He shed his blood for you on the cross. He loves you, a sinner. He shed his blood for you while you were still a sinner. He died for you on the cross while you were still a sinner. That is true love. But he's calling you out of sin. He's not coming to you to tell you to continue into sin, but he's calling you out of sin. He's saying, come my child, in me you have freedom, in me you have eternal life, in me you are free, in me you have no more chains, binding you. And so this is why in Christ, that's where true freedom is. All these hurricanes you see coming to the United States, it, it, it's a sign. A lot of people don't know how to interpret God's voice. But God doesn't just speak with, speak with a loud voice. God can speak by circumstances. And so if you truly repent and turn to God, He's going to hear your cry. The Bible says clearly, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. You can receive eternal life today. God is giving you a second chance. This is the true love that is in Christ. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for the sin of the world. No matter the sin you've ever committed, in case you're asking, am I going to be forgiven? Yes, you will. If you truly repent, because the Bible says the message of repentance is the same message that Jesus Christ has been preaching since he came upon the face of the earth. The message we are preaching today is even start today. This is an eternal gospel. Moses carried it. Abraham carried it. Abraham went to Sodom and Gomorrah. He was talking with God and saying, God, if you see 10 people in that city who know you, if you see 10 people in that city who know you, are you going to spare the city? God said, yeah. Abraham was bargaining with God concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. But God did not find people in that city that knew God. Only Lot and his wife and a few people. And so Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because they refused to turn to God. Sodom and Gomorrah represents you and I. If we continue to live our lives as Sodom and Gomorrah, at the end of the day, that life would destroy us. But Jesus Christ, He gave His life for you. He shed His blood on the cross for you. He gave you eternal life so that by His grace and mercy, you will be saved and go to heaven. And going to heaven is not by your works. 
Because I know a lot of people they say, I've done 10,000 works, you did 5,000, so I'm going to go to a better heaven. That's not how it works. Salvation is by faith and faith alone through Jesus Christ. Salvation is by faith, by the grace of God through faith, not of your own works. But the good thing is, when you receive the faith of Jesus Christ, He will begin to produce good works out of you. We don't do good works to be saved. We do good works because we are saved. Big difference. Other religions try to do good works to be saved. But we Christians do good works because we are already saved. This is what, this is what Christianity is all about. This is what coming to Christ is all about. Because Jesus Christ paid the, 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 the price upon the cross of Calvary. And He alone was qualified enough to pay that price. None of us qualified to pay that price. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Whether you are black, white, brown, God is not a racist. If you are a racist, I don't want your God. But I know a God who shed his blood for all. His name is Jesus. The Bible says he shed his blood for the sin of the world. Whether you are from Australia, whether you are from Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, South America, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, shed his blood on the cross for the sin of the world. And the Bible says, anyone who is willing enough, anyone who is willing enough and humble enough to surrender, God is going to hear their cry. And God is going to receive them into his kingdom. That is why do not allow your past to hold you down. Do not allow anything to stop you from coming to Jesus. Because when you come to Jesus Christ, your past is... Your past is over when you come to Jesus. That's what baptism, that's what baptism symbolizes. When you go into the water, you are buried with Christ. You are dead with Christ. Then when you come back out of the water, it simply means you've come into the newness of life. Baptism is just a symbolism of what really happens when you are born again. And so that is why the Bible says, except a man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of God. So if you really want to see the kingdom of God the way it is, you have to be born again. The Bible says we all were born in sin. Because we are a fallen creation. So we were all born in sin. But the Bible says you can be born again. And when you are born again, it's not by the will of men, not by the will of blood, but by the Spirit of God. God is your Father. And you can become His son. You can become His daughter today. If only you are willing to humble yourself enough and admit that you have sinned against Him and God will receive you into His kingdom. So today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart. If you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart because tomorrow is not promised. The wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life is knocking at your door. Jesus Christ is knocking at your door. The Bible says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and sob with him. God is literally knocking at your door. But are you going to open that door today for him to come in? Because you see, tomorrow is not promised. I know you have a lot of plans, but it's God priority in your plan I know you have plans to celebrate your birthday but what about your death day the day you're gonna die where will you go um, when you die or you think you're gonna exist like this forever right now no the Bible says there's a time to live, there's a time to die. And so just know that there's, and there's a day reserved like that for every one of us. That is a fact that no one wants to talk about. 
until it becomes a reality. Life is short on this side of the earth. But you have an eternity waiting for you. That's why this gospel we are preaching to you. It is not, it, it is not the, the things of this world. We are not preaching to you things that will, will perish. We are preaching to you things that will last forever. Eternal life is a gift from God. It's not something you buy with money. You buy with fame, popularity or with the applause of human beings. Because we live in a day and time. We live in a generation where a lot of people seek for human validation, human approval, and human applause. But they don't seek for God's validation, they don't seek for God's applause, and they don't seek for God's approval. But God's approval is higher and better. The world, the whole world can clap for you, while angels are not clapping for you. Just ask yourself the question, maybe the world is clapping for you when you are living for the devil. But ask yourself the question, are the angels clapping for me too? That's how you begin to question yourself to see if you are living in the will of God. The things you are doing with your life. I know your mom may be pleased with it. Daddy may be pleased with it. The United States government may be pleased with it. But what about the government of heaven? Is heaven pleased with what you are doing? Are the angels pleased with what you are doing? That's why I'm telling you, you cannot please God. Only God can help you to please Him. That's why it is not your work, it is His work through you. And it starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you come to Jesus Christ and allow Him to take it over all. And surrender all to Jesus Christ so He can take over. And in case you are asking God for a sign not to commit suicide, this is the sign. I am that sign. Don't do it. Now some of you may be wondering why I'm saying that. I don't just speak because I want to speak. God leads me to say words. You never know who is passing here. And they are dealing with them. But you see God created you with a purpose. God gave you. The Bible says that you have a purpose on earth. And so the reason why you see a lot of people today committing suicide and living for the devil is because they don't know their purpose. They try to get their purpose on Instagram. On TikTok. And so when they don't get it. They decide to kill themselves. Or they decide to do something evil. But you will know your true purpose when you come to Christ. Just like just like my hand right now. There are many people I prayed for and they got healed in Jesus' name, right? But it is when I came to Jesus when I realized that if you lay your hands on the sick in the name of Jesus, they'll get healed. But when I was not in Jesus, I did not know that possibility, right? In the same way, that's what happens. You came into this world, you don't know your possibility, you don't know really who you are until you come to Jesus and you begin to find out who you truly are. We're supposed to be sons of God, daughters of the Most High, sons of the Most High. God did not bring you to this world to be a prostitute, to be a liar, a thief, a porn addict, drug addict, no. That's their DNA that the devil wants to give you. But God has a different DNA for you. When you come to Jesus Christ, you now have a new DNA. When you come to Jesus Christ, the new DNA is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is your new DNA. It is only in the kingdom of God that everyone means someone. Everyone is somebody. But in this world today, some people say, oh no, this one is not. If we're talking about people, you can't be mentioned. You're, you're a low class. Me, I'm a higher class. But that's not how the kingdom of God functions. In the kingdom of God, everybody is a son of God. Yeah. There's no discrimination there. Because God is love. And God's love is perfect. And, and so you can't receive true love with mommy. You can't receive true love with daddy. Thank God for what they are trying to show you. But they are, they, they are sin too. They, they can't show you true love. They can't show you what perfect love is. The Bible says that only Christ alone showed perfect love. On the cross, Christ alone showed true love on the cross. He showed true love for the Chinese, the Japanese, the African, the Asian. He showed true love for the Euro the Europeans, the South American, North American. He showed true love for everybody on the cross. The Bible says on the third day, Jesus Christ, Yeshua conquered death and hell. He rose from the death 
in order to give you life eternal so that by the grace and the mercy of God you can be saved and go to heaven a lot of people are so entitled to this world a lot of people are holding on to this world investing their finances in the things of this world nothing wrong with that feel free to save and to invest but just make sure you are investing in heaven too because Jesus said do not lay for yourself treasures on earth but lay for yourself treasures in heaven where moth will not eat it meaning that this world will perish this world you are holding on to this world that you, you are getting your value from this world will perish one day but the Bible says God's word will abide forever God's word will never perish God bless you bro Jesus loves you man Jesus loves you bro for real bro he cares for you that is why the Bible says for God so loved the world for God so loved Cincinnati for God so loved Ohio that he gave his only begotten son now whosoever whether you're black white brown whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life now when I'm screaming out here some somebody may be wondering why, why is he screaming at at uh, 9 55 a.m and you don't know the hell i was in before jesus took me before jesus saved me god bless you man god bless you sir and your little dog <laughs> you do not know what i was in before jesus saved me only someone who is already saved can understand me can understand why i'm screaming if you know what i was in before Jesus saved me, because someone sees me, they think, oh, maybe he was born a Christian. Who was born a Christian, bro? We were all born in sin. I used to worship idols. I have marks on my body. I used to sacrifice my blood to idols. But when I was 16 years old, Jesus saved me. I I'm not here because I'm strong. I'm here because God is making me strong. Because now I don't live my own life. It is God's life. He helps me to live for him that's how in Christianity is in, in following Jesus Christ you don't do things by yourself it is God that helps you even for you to stop living a certain life it is God who helps you you cannot stop you cannot stop living for the devil by your own power you have to cry to God and say help me God help me help me help me help me help me but a lot of us are too proud a lot of people are so entitled to the things of this world they are so proud. Bro, I want to pray with you, man. I want to pray with you if you don't mind. Jesus loves you, bro. Okay? He loves you. He loves you. Yeah, God bless you, bro. Just stay in Him. Continue. Don't give up. Stay in Christ. Because that's where your true value is. That's where your eternal reward is. This is why we preach the gospel. Jesus said, if anyone must come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross. Let him follow me. Who you follow, you become. If you follow Lady Gaga, after a while, you become like Lady Gaga. If you follow Jesus, after a while, you become like Jesus. That's why I've preached many places. They take my speaker, they throw it away. I, know, I cannot count how many times they call the police on me here, right here on this spot. I cannot count how many times they call the police on me because I'm preaching Jesus sometimes I preach people say God bless you ma'am Jesus loves you so much God bless you ma'am nice to meet you sometimes I'm preaching the throw bear on me sometimes I'm preaching people say we're gonna shoot you with a gun we're gonna kill you I'm like all right if you're gonna kill me for Jesus I I'm ready but why do they say that just because you are talking about Jesus I don't know why talking about Jesus terrifies a lot of people. If I was talking about Mohammed, uh, Buddha, nobody would say nothing. But when it's about Jesus, I, I don't know why he's not terrifying a lot of people. Because Jesus Christ is truly the way, the truth, and the life. Everybody today in most religions, they're mocking Jesus. Why, why do you think these Hollywood stars are mocking Jesus? The people you call stars, when they make their songs, they show themselves on the cross mocking Jesus. Lil Nas showing himself mocking Jesus, thinking hell is fun. Why do you think they mock Jesus at the Paris Olympics? 
Why didn't they mock Mohammed? Well, why do the Jews only Jesus? Why can't they mock Buddha or the or the or the goddess in India called Shiva? Why don't they mock those idols? Why do they mock only Jesus? Why is the world focusing to mock only Jesus? Because he is truly the way, the truth and the life. That is why my friend, we, we, we are here to tell you about this person called Jesus. He loves you to die for you.
Cincinnati, Ohio, the United States of America, that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have eternal life. This is why we are out here today, preaching this gospel of salvation, so that by the grace and the mercy of God, you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says that Jesus Christ created this world visible and invisible. But even though He created the world, when He came into this world, the Bible says the world could not recognize Him. Meaning that God could be speaking right before your face and you cannot recognize Him still. When Jesus came into this world, the world did not recognize Him. But the Bible says, He still went to the cross. On that cross, Jesus cried and said, Father, forgive them, but they do not know what they are doing. I know a lot of people today pride themselves in sin. They say, oh, my life, my body, my choice, I do what I want. You see, even though God loves you, you have to understand that there are a lot of people who went into hell. Not because God didn't love them, but because they rejected the love of God. God doesn't throw people into hell. People go there by denying God's love. Big difference. Because Jesus already came into the world. He already went to the cross. He already defeated death and hell. He already rose from the dead to give us eternal life. And so, He already provided Himself for the sacrifices of our sin. He already conquered death and hell. He already rose from the dead. He already, already proved to us that He has the resurrection power. He rose a lot of people from the dead and rose Himself from the dead too. And, and so, He also promised us that those who believe in Him, they will never die. He will raise them up back to life. That's the great promise in Christ. That's eternal life so you can live for eternity to eternity with Christ. This is why we preach the gospel of the kingdom of God because this world is short. Time is short in this world. Jesus is coming back soon. It's time to get serious with God. It's time to get right with God. It's time to repent and turn to Christ for the salvation of our soul. The Bible says clearly, Jesus stands at the door and is knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking at your door. But are you going to open that door for Jesus today? He loves you. He shed His blood on that cross for the sinner. Jesus shed His blood on the cross for the liar. Jesus shed His blood on the cross for the thief. Jesus loves the sinners. He shed His blood for them. On that cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. But they do not know what they are doing. You can be a grown-up man and a grown-up woman. And you still, you don't know what you're doing with your life yet. That is why life does not begin when you are famous. Life does not begin when you have a lot of money. Life begins when you have Jesus. The day you have Jesus, that's the beginning of life. God bless you, sir. Because Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. It simply means I am beginning and. He knows the end from the beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And the Bible says, that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. He's coming back again to give you eternal life, to save you. He already set you free. He's coming to take the church. The Bible says, those who do not know God, when the trumpet sounds, when the rapture occurs, they will miss the rapture. If the rapture occurs now, would you miss it? While living in the end time, while living in the last days, and so God is giving you a second chance today. He's calling you today into His kingdom. He wants to give you a second chance. But are you going to humble yourself today to say, God, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me, God. I am a filthy sinner, God. Help me. But today, people can't cry like that no more. Most people are just saying, I don't care about God. I don't care about God. All right. When you'll be crying in the lake of fire, that time it'll be too late. When someone goes under in the grave, six feet deep down, you can't come back out. It's over. Your book is closed. The Bible says God is still writing the story of your life right now. But when you die, your book is closed. It will only be opened on judgment day. What if God closes your book now? What will God say about you? That did you, that did you truly turn 
to him you cannot save yourself only Jesus can save you no matter the sins you've done in your life you may be full of regrets but I want to tell you Jesus Christ can forgive all your sins today Jesus Christ he shed his blood on that cross for the sinner he can wash all your sins today he can cleanse you from all your impurities today in a second in a second he can wash all your sins today just believe and have faith and call on his name and you will be free the Bible says the name of Jesus is the name that is above all names the name of Jesus can set you free from depression suicide the name of Jesus gives you a purpose the name of Jesus Christ gives you a DNA called Son of God when you come to Jesus the world may call you by your past but Jesus Christ gives you a new name. That's what the Bible says. When you come to God, God gives you a new name. For example, my name is Perez. But spiritually, my name is Perez, son of God. If your name is James, your name is James, son of God. If your name is Andrew, your name is Andrew, son of God. And that's the DNA I carry, son of God. That's, that, that's how, it, when you come to God, when you come to Jesus, that's what you become. You become a son of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, to those who receive him, they were given the power to become sons of God. Being a son of God is power. Yes. We were given the power on the cross to become sons of God. You can be a son of God today. The Bible says, except a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you know God is touching your soul today, just ask Him for mercy. He will forgive you. I know that a lot of you passing here, God is touching your soul. Don't just be prideful and arrogant and you resist it. Just say, God, I don't know this young man preaching here, but as I was passing by, I just feel something I've never felt before. But as I was passing by, something is hitting me that has never hit me before. And I see, I can see that you are the true living God. And God, I'm, I'm, re I'm really sorry. I'm turning to you today. Have mercy on me. And the Bible says, immediately life will rejuvenate in you. Shoo! That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ died on the cross to, to rejuvenate you, to give you life, life eternal. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Meaning that the words Jesus speaks, when it comes into you, it pumps life into you. It pumps life into you. It pumps life into you. This is why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Those who call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Jesus Christ is the name above all names. The Bible says, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord God is love anyone who does not know God does not know love God is love God is love a lot of people think love is a kiss love is not a kiss God is love and God showed his love on the cross God demonstrated his love on the cross by coming upon the face of this earth 2,000 years ago in human form Jesus was beaten Jesus was persecuted Jesus was hated Jesus Christ they gave him crowns of thorns they gave him vinegar to drink they beat him they nailed him on the cross but on that cross Jesus he never stopped he never whatever they did to Jesus never stopped him from loving the people on the cross Jesus said Father forgive them they do not know what they are doing they do not know that's why sometimes I'm preaching here people pass and they are cursing at me I just say father forgive them they don't know what they are doing they are cursing at me because they don't know you because if they knew you they won't be cursing at me and so today is a day of salvation my friend you can experience the true love of God today in your life you can experience God's love the Bible says the gospel of Jesus Christ is power to those who believe. The gospel 
of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that because He died and rose again, you do not have to continue in sin. Because Jesus died and rose again, you do not have to continue in evil. Because Jesus died and rose again, you cannot continue living in darkness. It is time to repent and turn to the true living God. The Messiah already came and is coming back a second time. But if you are waiting for a different Messiah, you will receive the Antichrist, the son of the beast. But Jesus Christ already came and is returning back soon. But are you ready to meet your God? Are you ready to meet thy God? I know you are ready for work, but are you ready for heaven? I know you are ready for birthday, but are you ready for death day? I know you are ready for your anniversary, your party, but are you ready when heaven summons you? That's why we preach this gospel of salvation, so that by the grace and the mercy of God you have eternal life. By the grace and the mercy of God you are saved. By the grace and the mercy of God, you receive life that never perishes. And it is only in Jesus. Today you can be healed. Today you can be saved. Today you can have life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. Jesus is giving you a second chance, my friends. Do not turn away from him, but turn to him. He's calling you. Pick up the phone. Heaven is calling you. Heaven is calling you. You might have done a lot of bad stuff in your past life, but your past life does not define who you are today. When you come to Jesus Christ, your past is over. When you come to Jesus, are you okay? Jesus Christ did not come for the righteous, 
He came for the lost souls. He came for the sinners. In case you, because whenever I'm preaching, some people say, "Go preach in church." I do preach in church, but Jesus sent us to the world. Jesus called us to to preach to sinners, to those who are not yet saved. So our focus is not in church only. So Jesus Christ sent us out to to fetch for the lost, to bring the lost to Him. And so, if you are lost today, I want to tell you, I came here today for you. If you are lost and you are hearing this gospel, I tell you that Jesus Christ is calling you into His kingdom. Jesus Christ is inviting you into His kingdom because of His marvelous love, graciousness, and mercy. It causes Him to overflow His love over you. The Bible says the love of God engulfs our hearts. A lot of people today put value on the things of this world, value on the things they have, value on their job, value on their degrees. But do you know those things gonna perish? Because the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word abides forever. Jesus is the eternal word. The Bible says He was before the beginning of the world. And the Bible said, Jesus said, the new heaven and earth will pass away. But He said, My word abides forever. So He will abide forever. And Jesus said, You know what He said? Now the next thing He said, He said, If you abide in Me, you too, you will live forever. So when you come to Christ and you abide in Christ, you live forever. That's why we're preaching this gospel of salvation. A lot of people are thinking they're not gonna die. Life is short, my friend. Don't play games with your life. Your life came from heaven. And just make sure it goes back to the right place. Don't play games with your life as if your life is a casino. You don't have nine lives. You have a temporal life and an eternal life. So don't be playing games with your life out here. Your life is here on earth to glorify God. To bring glory to His name. A lot of us today on earth, we care so much about human applause, human validation. But we don't care about God's validation and God's applause. So when your friends are clapping for you, you say, woo, woo, woo. What about the angels? Are angels clapping for you? I don't care about human applause. Human applause. All I care about is heaven's applause. If, if angels are clapping, then that's enough. But we live in a, in a world that is so much entitled in human popularity, human applause, human validation, human recognition, and they don't care about the recognition of the Father. Does God recognizes you as His Son? This is the gospel of salvation. When you come to Jesus, you carry the power of sonship. You become a son of God for free. You become a daughter of God for free. Because Jesus already paid the price on the cross of Calvary by shedding His blood right there on the cross. So that by the grace and the mercy of God, you can be saved and have eternal life. I'm not here preaching religion. I'm not here telling you come to our church. No. I'm telling you come to Jesus. Jesus never said the Catholic church is the way. He never said the Baptist church is the way. Jesus said, I am the way. So the one who is the goal is Jesus. I'm not here preaching you religion. I'm not here preaching you, oh, come to this church, go to that church. No. I'm here preaching you Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua, He is the way, the truth, and the life. And those who call upon His name, they will have the right to eat of the tree of life. I know your name is written on your passport and your IDs and your work ID. But is your name written in the book of life? Because the Bible says there is a book in heaven where the names of those who are going to go to heaven are written there. I don't know if your name is written in the book of life because, because there's a book of life in heaven. I hope your name is there. I, I don't know you but I hope God knows you. Because the Bible says those who know Jesus, their names are registered in a book in heaven. That book is called the book of life. And the Bible says those who are not found Written in the book of life, 
They were thrown into the lake of fire. May your name be found on that day. May your name be found. Don't be caught up in sin. Don't be caught up in evil. Don't be caught up in disobedience. Don't be caught up in separation from God. But come to Jesus Christ, the one who leads you, the one who reconnects you, the one who connects you back to the Father. And so whatever sin you've done, whether you're a prostitute, drug addict, born addict, I came here today for you. Come to Jesus. He wants to save you. And He wants to change you too. But the sad reality is today, a lot of people don't want to repent, but yet they want to change. They don't want to repent, but yet they want the Holy Spirit to fill them. But if you check very well what Jesus said, He said, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me. A lot of people today want to be like the world, act like the world, do the things of the world. They don't want to deny themselves. Jesus said, if you love me, the world will hate you. So if everybody in this world are loving you, it's because you are making peace with the world. You are the same with the world. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ has called you to be holy, meaning he has called you to be separate. Holy means separate. So when Jesus calls you to become his son, you become separate from the world. You do not entangle yourself in the things of the world. Because the way to heaven is very narrow and not many will The way to heaven is narrow, not many will get in there. But the way to hell is broad. The way that leads to the lake of fire is broad. When we talk about hell, people get angry. But I have to tell you the truth. If Jesus spoke about it, I'm just a servant. I have to follow the master. As a servant, you have to follow your leader, right? So if the leader talks about hell, talk about it. If the leader talks about heaven, talk about it. But people today say, oh no, don't talk about hell. Don't talk about hell. I have to. People have to know that there are two ways. There's eternity in heaven and eternity in hell. They have to know about it. Yeah. And the reason why a lot of people behave like that is because they think if I warn you about hell, it is not love. It is actually love. God bless you, sir. If I tell you, don't go to this place, you're going to fall in the pit. That's love. But today, a lot of people think love is a kiss. No, love is not a kiss. God is love. God is love. So if I'm telling you anything about God, I'm actually telling you about love. I'm actually telling you about love. That is why today is the day of salvation, my friend. If you hear this gospel, if you hear this good news of salvation today, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart to the voice of God. But call upon His name so that you have eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. So you can go to God through Mary, through Buddha, through Mohammed. They are dead. They never died for you. They never lived the perfect life on earth. Jesus is the only perfect example. The only perfect one who lived without a sin. He lived a life of 33 years that a human cannot live for 33 seconds. Jesus Christ lived that life. He shed his blood on the cross for the sinner. That is why he sends us out to the street to call sinners to him. I'm not here calling people who say, I, I know God. I'm here calling people who are sinners to, to come to Christ. Because Jesus Christ, if he didn't love you, he would die for you. But he died for you on the cross because he loves you, the sinner. He loves you, the sinner. That's why. He shed His blood on the cross to redeem you from death and hell. And today, you can find peace with God if only you make your decision and make up your mind to get right with God. 
I'm not yet condemning anybody. I used to live for the devil before. I used to do idolatry. I used to be in idolatry, worshiping idols. I, I even sacrificed my blood to idols before. That's why I'm not scared of the little demons of Cincinnati because I've been in the dark side before. And I know what it is like. But Jesus Christ brought me out. Jesus Christ set me free. And now I'm out here proclaiming the truth of the gospel so that by the grace and the mercy of God you can be free too. Jesus is giving you a second chance today. God is calling you. He's giving you a second chance to repent and turn to Him before it's too late. The time is short. Time is running. The clock is, is ticking. There's no much time anymore. Jesus Christ is on His way back. But are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready when Christ comes? Huh? You prepared for many things. But you left judgment day out. You're supposed to prepare it for that. But Jesus Christ is giving you a second privilege today. A second chance to come to Him today. For the salvation of your soul. The Bible says. Revelation 2 verse 21 I gave her time to repent of her fornication but she did not many times God will be giving you time to repent the reason you are alive today is not just because you went to the doctor I know a lot of people who have never been to the doctor but they are still alive the reason you are alive today is because God is giving you time to reconcile with Him your reconciliation with God is possible today and reconcile with him today the Bible says clearly Jesus is the name above all names Yeshua means to deliver Yeshua means to save to rescue Yeshua is the name above all names and no one can compare to Yeshua he lived a perfect life on earth he never committed a sin he was not a sinner he was not born by sperms everyone born by sperms is a sinner Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit came on Mary. That's how she gave birth to Jesus. And Jesus was not just born. Jesus Christ did not just exist that time. The Bible says Jesus has been existing before the beginning of the world. The Bible actually says this world, Jesus created it. In Colossians 1 verse 16, the Bible says Jesus created the visible and the invisible. And the Bible says the things that are visible will perish. But the things that are invisible are eternal. There are so many things you do not see. But the things you see will perish. That is why even though you are in this world, gardening this world, do not forget to remind yourself that your true value comes from heaven. Your true value does not come from this earth. Because you're going to leave this earth one day. You're going to abandon this world one day. The Bible says that my word abides forever. God's word abides forever. And so if you come to this loving father, you will be saved. It's not a God that tells you, oh, obey these hundred rules, then you go to heaven. It is in him that we are saved. Not in those hundred rules. It is in him that we are saved. That is why my friend, we are telling you about this gospel of salvation. To tell you that salvation is a gift. Salvation is not something you earn. Take good care of yourself, sir. Salvation is a gift from God. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 8 that salvation is by faith. By the grace of God through faith, not of your own works, lest any man should boast. If salvation was by works, everybody would be boasting out here. Somebody will be saying, I've done 10,000 works. Somebody will be saying, I've done 2,000 works. Somebody will be saying, I've done 50,000 works. That's why salvation is not by works. God knew people were going to be boasting about it. And so salvation is by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. But when you come to Jesus Christ, He begins to change you. After He saves you, He begins to change you. When you come to Jesus Christ, you become a new person. The newness of God come on you. When you come to Jesus, you carry a new DNA become 
a son of God. When you come to Jesus, everything begins to change. And so today is the day of salvation. If you hear this gospel of salvation that we are preaching, it is high time for you to come to Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul because tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow may be too late. Heaven is calling. Are you going to pick up the call? Tomorrow may be too late for you. This is why we preach the gospel of salvation so that you can have eternal life. The Bible says clearly in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will open it and I will sup with him. God is knocking at your door. But are you going to open that door for him today? Jesus shed his blood on the cross to take away your sin. The Bible says on that cross, Jesus Christ took away the sin of the world. The space that was between God and man, a bridge was established because Jesus was the bridge. The reconnection took place on the cross when Jesus became sin for us so that we can have eternal life. That is why he cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Why have you forsaken me? He became sin for you and I. So that by the grace and the mercy of God, we will inherit God's kingdom. And so Jesus is giving you a second chance today. If you are hearing this gospel right now, if you are hearing this message right now, I want to tell you that God is giving you a second chance to truly repent and turn to Him. There's no more time. Time is running out. When you see all these hurricanes entering the United States, hitting Florida, hitting Alabama, hitting Georgia, hitting North Carolina, God is trying to say something to us. But a lot of people don't interpret God's voice. They think God only speaks with the voice of a thunder. God can speak with circumstances too. If you see some circumstances happening today in the United States of America, it's because God is trying to say something. That the land is full of filth. We need to repent. And it's not just because of that, but because we need, we need salvation. We need to be saved. And the only way to be saved and to be born again through Jesus Christ who is the way the truth and the life the Bible says in Isaiah 53 he was bruised for our iniquities Jesus was bruised for our iniquities he was beaten for our sins he gave his own life that you can have that life he laid down his life for you Jesus said I lay down my life by myself and I pick it back up in three days he simply meant that he's laid down his life for you and on the third day he's gonna rise again after he's, he lays his life for you he paid that huge price on the cross just to reconnect you back to God just to bring you back to God so, if you are hearing this message right now, don't look at my face or my appearance, but look at the God talking in me. Because David was 17 years old, but God made him king of Israel. When it comes to the kingdom of God, age doesn't matter. So don't look at my age, look at God in me talking to you. You see, if you truly need a relationship with God, you must come to that place of surrender and say, God, I surrender to you. And mean it with all your heart. Don't just say it because someone said, repeat after me. You don't go to heaven because you say, repeat after me. No, release those words out of your heart. Talk to God. Break down before God. Strip yourself of your pride. Break down before God. I don't know why a lot of people today are so proud. When you really know everything from this earth comes from God. Your clothes.
passport, your iPhone, your books, your shoes. Where did we get the materials from? Earth. Who created Earth? God. Why then are you proud? When you know that everything you have comes from God. Everything we literally have on this earth comes from God. Even the cars. These beautiful pavements I'm walking on here comes from God. God gave humans the wisdom to design this because God is the design is a designer too. Don't you see how God created you? He's a great designer. Look at your eyes, your hands, five fingers, your legs, the ears. God is a great designer. That's why we got it from God. We got that designing ability from God. And so everything we literally have comes from God. Because all the materials we got from earth. The gas you use in your car, it comes from God, crude oil. Who created crude oil? God created all of this. And all of this comes from God. And so today is the day of salvation. If you hear the voice of God today, do not hide in your heart. Tomorrow is not promised. Today may be your last day to hear the voice of God. So whenever you hear the voice of God, it is good that you humble yourself and call upon his name for the salvation of your soul and you will be saved and have eternal life so jesus christ is calling you today call upon his name today for the salvation of your soul and you shall be saved and have eternal life the bible says clearly i stand at the door and i'm knocking if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and sup with him. So God is literally knocking at your door. And if you open that door, he's going to come in and he's going to sup with you. Eternal life is a free gift. It's for free to those who repent and believe. You can receive that free gift today. Don't wait for tomorrow. People die every day. A lot of people wait until they die and say, R.I.P. Mommy. If, I, if Mommy did not know Jesus, she's not in heaven. I'm just telling you right now. The Bible says clearly that except a man is born again, they cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. R.I.P. does not save. Only Jesus saves. If you like, when you leave this world, people type 5 million R.I.P. on Facebook. 5 million R.I.P. on TikTok. R.I.P. does not save. But only Jesus says. Jesus said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And so today, you can receive that true love of God, eternal love, and eternal life. You can receive it today and right now. If only you call upon the name of Jesus for the salvation of your soul. He's giving you a second chance today. Do not run from God, but run to God. This may be your last day to hear the gospel. This may be your last opportunity to hear about Jesus. And you may never hear about Him again. That is why whenever you hear the gospel of salvation, it is good that you make up your mind at that time to turn to Him so that you will have salvation. Access to heaven was given to us by Jesus Christ. Call upon His name today, my friend, and you will be saved. The Bible says the names of those were not found written in the book of life they were thrown into the lake of fire so I hope that your name is written in the book of life I hope your name is found in the book of life may your name be found in that book because if your name is not found in that book of life you'll be lost forever from God but I want to tell you that God has made a provision for you so that you can be reconnected back to Him 
Today is that day, my friend. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't say, I'm going through a lot. And that's why I don't want to turn to God. No, 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 no. Everybody goes through something. No matter the smile they have on their face. Joe Biden, do you think Joe Biden want to talk and collapse? No. That's something he's going through. So everybody goes through something. Whether rich or poor. They still go through something. Look at Donald Trump. Almost got assassinated two times. Isn't that going through something? Everybody goes through something. So don't say, oh, because I'm going through this, that's why I don't want to turn to God. Yibi, yibi, yaba, yaba. That's not how it works. Bring your excuse to Christ. Bring your, your, your sin to Christ. Bring your mistake to Christ. And God will heal you from it. God is love. And He demonstrated His love on that cross. So that you can have life. And so today is the day of salvation, my friends. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ today for the salvation of your soul and you shall be saved Jesus Christ is calling you are you going to pick up the phone today you see the Bible says the wages of sin is death meaning the more you sin the, the more you die but the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life eternal life is a gift if I give you a gift, did you do anything for me to give it to you? A gift is a gift. You give it freely. But the way you treat that gift determines whether it's going to last or not, right? In some way, salvation is a gift. And so when God gives you this gift of salvation, He now tells you to follow Him so that you can abide in His love. The Bible says if you don't follow Him, you won't be able to abide in His love. So salvation is a precious gift from God. You don't earn it like you earn a degree. Salvation is a perfect gift from God. But when you receive this perfect gift from God, the Bible says you follow Jesus so that you can abide in His love. And so today is the day of salvation, my friend. If you hear the voice of God, do not hide in your heart, but turn to Him today so that you can be saved. God bless you, sir. So that you can be saved and have eternal life tomorrow is not promised you can leave this world at any time look at what's happening in uh, with america today with florida alabama georgia and north carolina all these hurricanes that are hitting the nation it's a sign from god but a lot of people cannot interpret what's going on god is trying to tell us the land is filled with fields and we need to repent and turn to Him. But we're investing so much in this world. And we forget the investment of heaven. But Jesus said, do not lay for yourself treasures on earth. But lay for yourself treasures in heaven. Where rat and moth will not eat it. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And every other thing shall be added to you. This is the gospel of salvation that we preach. And so Christ is calling you. Today He is giving you a second chance. Bring your sin to Jesus. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm simply here to tell you, bring your sin to Jesus. And Jesus will help you. Jesus will heal you. Jesus will take your sin away. Jesus Christ, He said clearly, Come unto me, all of you who are weary and are heavily laden. I will give you rest for your soul. Jesus said, My yoke is easy. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Bring your burden to God. Give it to Him. Bring your sins to Christ. Submit it to God. And God will take it. He will help you. He will reconnect you back to Him. The blood of Jesus can make you new. Whether you're a, whether you're a liar, the blood of Jesus can make you new. Whether you are angry all the time, the blood of Jesus can make you new. Whether you're a thief, the blood of Jesus can make you new. No matter the sin you have in your life, the blood of Jesus can make you new. And so come to Christ today for the salvation of your soul. This blood of Jesus will make you new. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus died for the sin of the world 2,000 years ago. He conquered death and hell 
on that cross so that by the grace and the mercy of God we can be saved and have eternal life living for the devil is basic it's not gonna take you anywhere but Jesus Christ shed his blood on that cross so that by the grace and the mercy of God you can have life more abundantly today no matter the sins you've done in your past it is not over the Bible says when you come to Jesus your past is over when you come to Jesus your past is over you become a new person even if you were a liar a thief drug addict when you come to Jesus your past is over you become a new person and so today God is calling you he wants to make you new he wants to save you from your sin do not die in your sin because if you die in your sin you won't be able to go to heaven but Jesus Christ who was perfect alone paid the price on the cross just to redeem you and today I want to tell you you can be saved you can be redeemed from your sin you can be set free from the bondage of hell those chains can be loose today if only you believe and you truly repent the Bible says God will hear your cry but are you willing today to repent are you willing today to turn to Jesus? Are you willing today to surrender your life to Him? Because you see, God is giving you time, but you won't have that time forever. Life is short on this side of the earth. But He paid the price on the cross for your sin 2,000 years ago to redeem you. No matter what your sin is, bring it to Jesus. Are you a liar, a thief? Home addict, drug addict, lesbian, homosexual, transgender, whatever your sin is, bring it, bring it to Jesus. He will rescue you from your sin. The Bible says clearly, the wages of sin is death. God bless you, sir. Jesus loves you, sir. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus said, no man can come to me unless the Father draws them. And so if you are passing by and you know that God is drawing your heart, do not resist Him. Just call upon Him and say, God, have mercy on me. Help me, God. God will hear your cry. I'm not here condemning anyone. I used to be a sinner. I used to live for the devil. I used to worship idols. I have marks on my body. I used to sacrifice my blood to idols. But Jesus set me free. That is why I am unashamed, unapologetic to tell the whole world that Jesus is the only way to heaven. No matter what it's going to cost me. Jesus Christ, He shed His blood on that cross. On the cross, He showed perfect love. He said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. And so on the cross, forgiveness was given to us. That is why today when you say, God forgive me, He's going to hear you. Jesus forgive me. Because the Bible says in John 14 verse 14 that, Ask anything in my name and I will do it. That's what Jesus said. Ask anything in my name and I will do it. So when you go to God and you say, God, Jesus, have mercy. Just like the woman cried in the Bible, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus Christ said, Go, you are made whole. When Jesus met the woman that committed adultery, He said, Woman, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. When Jesus Christ met people, they never left the same. They left changed. They left transformed. Something happened to them. And that is why, my friend, you see, Jesus Christ is still alive today because He conquered death and hell and He rose from the dead. We're not preaching a dead God. This gospel we're preaching has been preached from many generations. Moses preached this gospel. The prophets, Isaiah, preached this gospel. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus. In Isaiah 53, he said, He was bruised for our iniquities. Meaning Jesus was beaten for our iniquities. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. But the Bible says, By the grace and the mercy of God, we are saved. 
and it's through Christ that we have eternal life. Jesus loves you guys. School, school kids, Jesus, Jesus loves you all. Believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, okay? He loves you all. Jesus loves you all. Jesus loves you all. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Jesus loves the young as he loves the old. Jesus loves each and every one of you. Youths, Jesus shed his blood for you. He paid a huge price on the cross to give you eternal life. So that by his grace and God bless you, bro. Jesus loves you, bro. Jesus Christ paid a huge price on the cross so that by his grace and mercy, you can be saved and have eternal life. God bless you all. Jesus loves you all. You guys look pretty handsome. You all look good. Yeah, that's beautiful. God's creation. The Bible says God made you all in his image. God bless you all. You, look, you all look beautiful. You all look handsome. The Bible says that God made you in his image and likeness. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him. God bless you, man.
a life that you cannot buy with fame and popularity, a life that you cannot buy with the things of this world. That life is freely given to you on the cross of Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Christ rose from the dead to give you life eternal. You can receive that life right now. You can receive that life today. If only you say, God have mercy on me. And you believe in Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. You acknowledge that you are a sinner. And you turn to God to ask him for mercy. The Bible says, God will hear your cry. And he will have mercy on you. Cincinnati, turn to Jesus Christ. Call upon him. He's watching over you. God sees whatever you do. Visible. He's watching. When you are at home, when you're on the street, wherever you go, God is watching. God's silence does not mean God's absence. Just because he's silent does not mean he's absent. He's watching. Don't blow it up. But turn to Christ today for the salvation of your soul. You shall be saved. Amigo, Jesucristo te ama mucho. Creo a Jesucristo, hoy tú serás salva. Jesucristo, el salvador del mundo. Jesucristo, viene pronto. Recibí a Jesucristo en tu corazón. Y tú serás salva. This is the gospel that we are preaching. The gospel of salvation. So that by the grace of God, you will be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, you can be that whosoever today, whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have life eternal. Eternal life is promised to those who humble themselves and cry out to God for mercy. God will have mercy on you. God will forgive you. Because Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he provided himself as a sacrifice on that cross for you and I. He's calling you today. He's giving you a second chance today. But are you going to call upon him for the salvation of your soul? If you do call upon him, the Bible says, you shall be saved and you shall have eternal life jesus is knocking at your door right now but are you gonna open that door for him to come in if you open that door he's gonna come in and he's gonna stop with you and you will have eternal life jesus christ is calling you he's giving you a second chance today He's giving you a second chance today to come to his kingdom. The Bible says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning whatever words Jesus spoke gives life to you. Jesus also said, I am the way, I am the truth and I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. When you come to Jesus Christ, you receive eternal life. Eternal life is a precious gift from God. Eternal life is granted to you by faith through grace. By the grace of God, through faith, Christ is offering you this privilege. Christ is offering you. God bless you, sir. Jesus loves you, sir. Have a good day at work. May God protect you. Today is a day of salvation. This is why we preach this gospel, so that by the grace and the mercy of God, you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says, the wages of sin is death. The more we sin, the more we are causing harm to ourselves. So when God says, don't do this, don't do this, it's because of his love. If you have a two-year-old child and she's going to jump into the ocean, are you going to allow her? But you're going to restrict her. Why? Because of love. But today people say, oh, the Ten Commandments is because God doesn't want us to be free. No, God is restricting you because of love. He knows sin is going to destroy you. He knows sin is going to harm you. And so when God says, don't do this, I see his love. You may see his hatred. But I see his love when God tells me that. And so this is why the gospel of salvation is very important. I know you prepared for your birthday. But have you prepared for your death day? When you die, where will you go? Where will you spend eternity? Heaven is calling you today. But are you going to open your door for God to come in? Because you see the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Jesus loves you all. Believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. Jesus died for all races, black, white, brown. He loves you all. He loves you. The Bible says Jesus died for the sinners. No matter what you've done, give it to Jesus. He's going to accept you.
Jesus Christ, he shed his blood on the cross and on that cross Jesus said, Father, forgive them but they do not know what they are doing. It means that life begins when you come to Christ. Jesus Christ, when he came into this world, the Bible says he was beaten. They put a crown of thorn on his head. They nailed him on the cross. No matter the evil they did to him, he did not stop him from loving. That is why Jesus Christ, he said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. And so today you can come to Jesus. The blood of Jesus can make you new. And when you come to Jesus, your past is over. When you come to Jesus, your past is over. You will be made whole and new.